welcome to the channel. Today we are talking about Snort. I'm going to go through and install Snort on PFSense and go right from the beginning and we're going to talk about the, the GUI and we're going to talk about some of the features. We're going to create a intrusion detection rule in Snort and then at the end of the video I'm going to switch it up and take that exact same rule but instead of an intrusion detection it's going to be an intrusion prevention Let's go. I'm assuming that you've got a functioning PFSense and you can actually connect to it from a LAN side and access the GUI like I've got on the screen right now. If you want to install PFSense in a virtual box environment, I've got a video link right above me that you can follow and get PFSense running. Once that's running, then you'll be able to access all the awesome features that PFSense has for us. Another thing, you do need to have internet access in order to actually install the Snort package. Getting the Snort package is really, 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 really easy because PFSense has this really cool feature where we can just go to system, go down to our package manager, and look for available packages. Because we have internet access, we have all of these available packages that we can install into our PFSense machine. We want to do Snort. So in the search, type snort, and let's search for it. And it's pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and install it. Confirm it. And then wait for, for the install to happen. Grab yourself a coffee if you want. It's going to be pretty fast. And it looks like it's done. Perfect. What I really like about putting Snort and other other types of intrusion detection onto a PFSense is that I can actually create some kind of environment that will alert and potentially stop traffic from getting into another virtual machine. I use Kali and I route through the PFSense machine to go to the internet. So while in the PFSense, I can set up whatever I want to create a secure environment locally inside of my my host machine, my laptop. Let's go and take a look at Snort itself. Before we get too crazy and making rules and stuff, we do need to look at the menu items that we've got in our Snort uh, instance here. So Snort interface, this one's gonna be really important and we're gonna come back to this one because this is where we actually add an interface where we can add rules and monitor things. It's, it's really good, but this is a this is going to be a primary spot that you're going to be spending a lot of time in. Um, as we add more networks, you're going to be adding interfaces that would be found inside of this section here. Let's go to global settings. Now this is really interesting because you can actually add all kinds of interesting things. So Snort has a lot of community rules. They've got emerging threats. They've got open app ID detectors and Honestly, I'm not going to go in and give you definitions of all of these things, but what you should know is that a lot of work has been put into building rules that would benefit you. And so it's in this location that you can actually choose what it is that you want to add to your snort that's been pre-made. These are all good, and I've used these rules before, and they, they work great, but that's up to you. It depends on what you want to have as your your infrastructure and what you want to do as protection. So let's go to the next section, updates. Updates is also pretty straightforward. Remember how in global settings we had, we were able to select uh, rule sets and community rules and emerging threats. This would be the spot where you could update manually the rules that have been created on the internet. So they don't necessarily update automatically. You can have it set so that it checks for updates or you can just do it manually. So that would be like in the force update zone right here. Let's go to alerts. This is a general log for all the alerts that you're going to be having that are being caught by your snort. So this would be this would be everything. So if you've got a, a snort and you've got community rules turned on, this is going to be absolutely massive. They could be false positives and that's kind of annoying. So I recommend when you're creating your snort for the first time, don't use community rules at the beginning. Create your own very basic rule. 
and then have that work, like trigger it somehow. And if that's working, then you're in a good place. And then gradually add community rules. Blocked, this would be referring to a situation where somebody has triggered a alert and the host is going to be blocked. Pass lists. This would be for machines that are like admin machines that have to go out and do something on the internet that will potentially trigger alerts. That's where this would happen. So you could you could add information relevant to that type of scenario. Suppress is a section where we would have you've got alerts triggering on something, whatever that that thing is. But you would like to still keep that rule but not have it logged. So it would be just saying, I'm going to suppress that. I'm going to keep the rule, but I'm not going to be getting my alerts on it. Let's go over to IP lists. Now I've got nothing in here because this is a clean install of Snort, but what we would see inside of here would be things like a blacklist or a whitelist. These would be IPs that we definitely, definitely want to stop. Or you know what? It's okay if, they, if people go to the, this particular IP. Honestly, you're probably not going to be spending too much time inside of SID management. Most of your time is going to be spent inside of Snort interface. Log management. This one, this one really is what it says it is. How are you going to manage the logs that Snort has? Do you want to keep them for a while? Do you want to have them be automatically nuked after a certain period of time? That's up to you. And then you've got sync here, which is where we would be able to sync up with a different Snort package somewhere else. Let's go over to Snort interfaces, and we're going to actually add a interface for this PFSense. So in this case, I only have two interfaces. I've got the WAN and I have the LAN here. And I'm going to go ahead and add a, a LAN interface add and the interface I want to do is LAN. Let's go through and add all the important stuff that we need to get this thing running. Snort will send alerts to the firewall system log. Default is checked. I, I do not turn this on typically because Snort has its own logging and the firewall of PFSense has its own logging. So it's kind of nice to keep those things separate blocking offenders check this option will automatically block hosts that generate a snort alert default is not checked so this would be did that did an ip in the network do a bad thing well then you know what let's go ahead and block that person let's add them to the list home net and external net are very important as they relate to the networks that should be monitored when you if you were to do snort as a network intrusion as a standalone and sort of like a ubuntu machine which i've got a video here on the screen you would have to state what the network is is it a class c 192.168.1.0 slash 24 is it a class a 10.10.0.0 slash 16 you'd have to specify that Awesome, we've got ourselves a interface. Currently it is not turned on and that's okay because what we need to do is go into this interface and edit a couple of things. So like I said before, I always make this one snort rule first and then test it. And if it works, then I proceed with making other rules. It's, it's great. Let's go and take a look at a couple of things inside of our our interface here. The thing that you're gonna be spending a lot of time in, in this particular section, is gonna be land rules and land variables. Let's look at variables. When you're making your rule, you can actually reference it. So you can say DNS servers, what does that actually mean? Uh, proxy IPs, SIP servers. There's a, a whole bunch of variables that you can reference inside of a snort rule. This is how you would do it. You would actually use this variable for making the rule land rule here now this is where you're going to spend a lot of time and quite often if you're building just a just a custom sort of setup 
you're going to be making a custom rule. But we do have some other zones that you can actually monitor. Preprocessor, we've got uh, decoder, user, force disable rules. But for the for the regular for the regular user, not a power user, you're going to be using custom rules. And then whatever your rule is, you're gonna you're gonna put it in here. You're gonna you're gonna literally type it out. So let's look a little bit at the rule that I made for my for my test. Okay, and this is the general configuration of a snort rule. You're gonna have the action. What is gonna be happening? We're going to alert. We're gonna log. Uh, are we gonna block? What's the protocol? that we're going to be playing with. Oftentimes it's going to be TCP because that's the that is the connection based protocol. If I want to go to the internet, I'm going to be using TCP. And kind of the nice thing about uh, snort rules is that there, there's not a ton of protocols that we actually need to play with. Most of the time you're going to be playing with TCP. But in this case, I like to use ICMP because sending a ping to the internet is extremely easy. Remember how I mentioned variables up here in LAN variables? This is the variable that's referring to my LAN network. It's my home network. That's the variable for it. So anybody that's on the network that's within 192.168.1.0 slash 24 as defined by my, my PFSense here, that will catch any of those. Over here, we've got the port, and this is just an any, so it's like, I don't really care what the source port is, because it's ICMP. But if you were going to be doing from a TCP, maybe you care about a port or a port range, etc., etc. Now we have a direction, so this would be coming from my home network to another variable here, which is external net. So this is outside of my local network anybody it could be a different class c in a different lan that would still that would still trigger it because it's outside of my network what's the destination port in this case i don't care so i put in any and then because it's setting alert i kind of want my log to say something so i was being cheeky and i will i found a ping yo and then for most rules you also are going to give it an sid which is just an identifier for that snort rule, it's unique. This is the only rule that can have this identifier. If you want to reference other SIDs, you would you could use that as an SID. So generally I start with a really, really big number like this and it's safe because community rules are typically in the lower, lower range and custom rules should be in the higher range because you know that you're, you're probably not gonna have a crossover. So let's go ahead and, and give this a test. But before we do that, we need to go back to our Snort interface and turn it on. We want we want it to be watching for stuff. Check mark means, hey, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and trigger this alert. I will often ping Google's DNS because I, I feel like it's a great way to quickly see if traffic leaves the network. It's not TCP, it's ICMP, but it goes out, and if it comes back in, I've got access to leave the network. So let's ping it. We got some traffic coming back in. We can see 64 bytes coming back into my network, which is good. I left, I came back in. And so if this was if this is working, we should have alerts. Let's go up to our alerts in Snort. And look at that. We've got our, our message here. Ping found, yo. Uh, protocol ICMP, the time that it was done, the source IP, the destination IP. That's that's my my first snort rule I always make whenever I set up snort again, fresh. And if it works, that means that my configurations right now are working. I would then proceed with adding a little bit of complexity, gradually amping up to a an awesome system that can look for things and alert, block, whatever. Let's go the next step and say, I see that thing that I don't want. Now let's stop that thing that I don't want. We're going to change this IDS solution into an IPS solution. So intrusion 
prevention. It's great. And it goes a little bit like this. I'm going to use the exact same rule, but I'm going to stop the traffic. Now, I'm going to be using a another machine. I've put another machine onto my network. It is a Metasploitable, super easy machine to just throw onto a network for testing. I mean, it's a vulnerable machine, but I like to do it for things like this because I'm like, boom, let's rock. And it's there and I can do things like ping, okay? Uh, it's not a heavy resource type of machine. If we look at the IP address, we've got a 102 on this machine. So that's important. Take note that it's a ending in a 102 post space. Right now, this is disabled. Okay, so let's go in and edit this rule and turn it into IPS pre prevention. All uh, right, we're going to go to the LAN settings and head on down to the block offenders. Boop. Turn that on. And we're going to honestly block it. <laughs> we're, that's it. We've, we've turned it on. We're going to leave it in legacy mode. Kill states is very important here because we're dealing with a, a stateful firewall. So if something has been established, but wait a second, we want to block that, it'll go to the firewall and kill that state. That's really important. So have that checked. And which one do we block? Source, destination, both. Why not? Just let's block both of them. And good. So now that's it. <laughs> that, that's literally it. Let's go double check our rule. And so it's looking for alerts. This is the same one we had before. So we're going to generate some traffic. And we're going to look at the logs and stop it from happening. All right. Double checks that. That's good. Let's open up the Metasploitable machine here. And we are going to send that traffic. We're going to send a ping. And we have it. We got one that came back. So something went out because it's allowed on the firewall. But we were watching on Snort. And nothing's coming back in. Like, it's that's it. One came back in. The state is killed. Let's look at our alerts. Beautiful. Look, we've got a whole bunch of pings. You know how I was, I was waiting for a few seconds there? These are all of the... This is all the traffic that was alerted that matched our rule. Okay, good. We also know that it was blocked. So let's go and look at our blocked section in PFSense. Beautiful. We know the rule that was used to block. We know what happened. And we know that this is going to be the blocked IP address. It's not the greatest one because maybe that was that's Google's DNS. But I mean, whatever. In this particular case, it could be any IP address that you want. Uh, and you want to sometimes block dynamic IP addresses because bad actors are using all kinds of IP addresses. Let's go and use our Metasploitable machine again. And we're going to send another ping to Google's IP address here. And nothing comes back in because it's, it's stopped. So we have successfully created a rule that alerts and we'll create a an intrusion detection it tells me yep there's something happening and then we flick the switch and now our intrusion detection is actually creating a opportunity to do the exact same work but now it's going to the next step and it's locking the traffic that's good there are so many rules that you can add to snort it's it's wonderful if you're enjoying this channel I've got a couple other videos. Go ahead and give those a watch, and we'll talk to you soon. See ya!